So this is something that is really neat for us to be able to understand exactly what's happening when we're putting. One of the most important things that you can do when you putt is to get the ball to respond the way you want it to respond. What's the rotation on the ball that we want when we're striking the ball? What's the rotation when we putt? We want a forward rotation. So in order for us to get a forward rotation, there are some important things that need to happen, right? What are they, in order for us to get this ball to tumble the way we want it to tumble, how are we gonna strike it? Where do we want to, we want an upward angle of approach, right? So we want this to be moving up. What's the, what's the impact point on the ball? Where do we want the impact point on the ball to be? Above the equator. Where do we want the impact point on the face to be? Any idea? Where do you want the impact point on the face to be? Low or high? Who wants high? Who wants low? You want low? Not sure yet. Okay, and you want low? So if we hit it low on the face, that would mean that the leading edge is gonna to have to beat the, the top line, right? So that's gonna be low, that's gonna be high. So if we hit it low on that face, what have we done to the loft? Increased loft. And if we increase loft, what are we gonna likely do to the golf ball? Put backspin on it, and what? Launch it up into the air. So if I stand here and I put this in this position here and I hit this, and it jumps up into the air like that, what's gonna happen when the ball hits the ground? It's gonna have a skid. So here's what that looked like. So you can see the ball, can everybody see this? Ball jumped up into the air, it rotated backwards. When it lands on the ground right here, what happens to the ball? It hops, because it now has to change its rotation, right? What happens to the friction value on that ball when it's going backwards and hits the ground? Is it high or low? It's gonna be high. And what do you get when you get a high degree of friction on that ball when it gets on the ground? What happens to the ball? In theory, what would happen? What? It slows it down. It slows it down. So on the, on the quad here, what you're gonna see is, I don't know if you can see this, it says 409B. B stands for what? Backspin. So when we hit on this, we wanna get Fs. We want to get an F because it left with a forward rotation and then we want it to continue to go into that forward rotation. And obviously, because of the ground, the ball's going to get into a forward roll at some point. Where it's getting into a forward roll, which is different than true roll. Does everybody know what true roll is? So true roll is when you get the ball to be going com the complete distance of the circumference of the ball. And it's something, where's Greg? What's that, what's that thing? It's like five and something, five point something inches in circumference, right? For a, when a golf ball is rotating fully, it travels a distance of 5.2 inches. So what we wanna do, oh, you got a TV right here, perfect. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this ball, it's gonna have some skid to it, but it also wants to be into a forward roll. It, Forward roll and true roll are different. They're not the same. Does everybody get it? Okay, so you saw that I had, and you can see here, I don't know if that's on that screen, but right here on, the, on this machine, when it comes back up, you're gonna see that black dot low on that putter face. Can you all see that? So that's telling you where you struck it on the face. One of the most important. Yeah, so there's your low impact point right there. And you can see that that launched at a 10 degree angle up into the air, all right? So a lot of bad things going on there. And one of the reasons why we don't wanna launch the ball up into the air, are you wearing a tie? No, you're looking beautiful with that shirt. Nice to see you. So what happens is this, when we hit a ball, we want the ball to, the ball's gonna have an axis of rotation. Does everybody get that? And we want that axis of rotation to be parallel to the ground, which eventually at some point down the line here, it's gonna get into when it gets into the true roll. When it's in true roll, the ball is spinning around that axis. But up until that point, it can do anything. 
And if we launch it up into the air, and then we open that face, so what I did there was I hit a low on the, on the face, low on the ball. When I start messing around with hitting it into different parts of the ball, low and inside or low and outside, all of a sudden the ball's gonna jump up into the air, it's gonna have an axis of rotation that's gonna tilt. And when that axis of rota rotation tilts, what happens to the ball when it lands on the, on the ground? It's gonna jump the opposite direction. So if you make a cut putting stroke, it will create a hook outcome. If I make a hook putting stroke, it'll have a cut outcome. Does everybody understand that? And if you ever talk, if anybody's ever talking to you about, yeah, I hooked my, no, you don't hook your putts. Nobody hooks their putts. Bobby Glock didn't hook his putts. He looked like he hit a hook, but he didn't hook his putts. So if I take this putt right here, now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put some loft on it. I'm gonna cut across it. Do you see it spin that way? I'll do it again. Okay, here you go. There's your information. So there's my open face. Low and inside creates a cut spin to it. That cut spin, this is so important to understand this. When I'm hitting a cut spin, I'm not worried about the numbers now. When I hit a cut spin here, it's gonna hook. And when it hooks, so you saw that start out here, then it got to here, and then it kind of straightened out down the, down the line. If you guys are interested, you need to be able to see the screen. Come on in. Come on in, the water's fine. So what happens is, is that when you start hitting a putt with that kind of loft and that kind of spin, here's the problem. On a short putt right here, you'll miss the putt to the push side. On a longer putt here, when you have to create more club head speed, it fires it up into the air, you create more spin. It, has a, uh, it now has a, a, an axis of rotation that's tilted. When it jumps, it jumps left, you'll miss it to the left. Exact same path, exact same face angle, just a faster speed, you can miss both left and right. Has anybody ever gone to a, a tournament playing in a scramble format and you guys are looking at the putt and you go, okay, this is a, this is a right edge putt. And then your, your definer, the person who putts first, hits that putt and it misses by a cup to the left. And the next guy goes, okay, we have to aim a cup to the right and they hit it to a cup to the right and it misses a cup to the right. Has anybody experienced that phenomenon? This is why. Well, now we can understand it, we can see it. Okay? Anybody has any questions, just shoot them out right away. I work well with questions. Okay? So what I, what I worry about is I'm worried about my impact point on the putter face and on the golf ball. I want it high on the face and high on the ball. How do I get it high on the face? It's okay to say I don't know. I didn't know. I don't know. You take the putter and you go like this. The reason why Hogan's wear out point was a little bit in the heel was because he hit with an open face and the thing was leading there. If it's an open face, that's why you hit a hosel rocket that way, face open, the hosel gets to the ball first. So if I'm hitting a putt where I have a high impact point, I just do that. Now, there's gonna be somebody that's gonna go, well, wait a second, if you do that, we don't have any loft on the putter. We're taking loft off the putter. We need to have loft on the putter. Somebody tell me why we need loft on a putter. What's that? Get it out of a depression, right? Sitting in a depression, we gotta get it out of a depression. Like it's an elevator, we're gonna hit this, the ball's gonna magically go straight up into the air and then go shooting like that. It's not gonna do that. It sounds like it should do that, but it doesn't do that. And you know how I know it didn't do that? Because I videotaped it. And here's what happens. When the ball gets hit, doesn't matter if you have any loft at all when it gets hit, if it's it truly in a depression, it hits the front part of the depression, jumps up into the air, creates a top spin to it, because the friction happens, it runs into a wall, jumps up, over rotates, you can't put backspin on a ball that's truly in a depression. Can't happen. But we know we did it because I showed you backspin. So why do we say, well, it's sitting in a depression, I need loft to get it out of depression. Why do we do that? Because we do what we always do. Somebody told us that. And once we heard somebody tell us that, we went, okay, well, this is gospel truth. Because Bobby said so, Bobby said it's in a depression, and damn it, it's in a depression, so let's lay loft on that putter. Now, why do we have loft on a putter? 
Right, I don't know either. <laughs> so here's the deal. Now watch when I hit this, I'm gonna lean this putter forward. I'm gonna strike this. We're gonna see a high impact point on the, on the putter head and a high impact point on the ball. By the way, that last one that I hit with backspin, I actually carried it one yard. So here's, here comes my putt. Now let's look at our impact point. First of all, pretty good tumble here. Got it to do what I wanted it to do. Look at the impact point, see how it got up high there? And now you can also see that it's de-lofted. And obviously when it's de-lofted, the only thing that's sitting up there is that, that leading, that, that top line. Now, here's what you need to understand. It's the hardest part for me to grasp when I was doing all my research. When a ball gets struck by a putter because it's not a compression that goes to the core, it's just a compression that goes to the cover, there's an impact point. Anybody ever putt with a sand wedge? And you, when you putt successfully with a sand wedge, where do, you, where do you hit it on the sand wedge? On the leading edge. Is there any loft on the leading edge? No. It's an impact point. You might as well be standing there with a pool cue. We just call it the face. But it's just a pool cue. You're just creating an impact point. And that impact point you have to be able to control. So in order for you to be a good putter, what you wanted is you want to create an impact point that's high on the face and high on the ball. Ideally right on the center line or the vertical line, slightly above the horizontal line. That's what you're trying to do to get the ball to tumble the way you want it to tumble. And when you do that, now you create an axis of rotation that's parallel to the ground. Because when you hit it, now it's on the ground. It can't go into the ground, by the way. It can't go into the ground, it's on the ground. It's not like the, the ground is gonna, it's not like it's water. You can deflect it and the ground can repel it and shoot it up, but it can't go into the ground. So now we have to work on the angle of approach because we're gonna get an impact point there, but we have to make sure that the angle of approach or the, the what we call line of action, which is how we're taking the energy of this putter or this impact point and, going, and having it go through the ball we want that, imp that, that line of action to be going in an upward direction. Now, here's the simple way to teach this. If I had a thousand pound tire right here, and I was gonna get this tire into that simulator, would I push it or roll it? Roll it, I ain't gonna push it. So we're gonna roll it. Now when I put my hands on this tire, am I gonna put my hands down here, in here, or up here? Where am I gonna put my hands to get it to roll? Maybe in the middle, slightly above, something like that. Now what am I gonna do with my hands? Am I gonna push my hands like this? Am I gonna push my hands down? Or am I gonna push my hands up to get it to roll? Up! There's not a person alive that answers those questions incorrectly. Not a person alive. There's nobody that's, not even Arnold Schwarzenegger's going, I'm gonna push this tire this way. Nobody does that. You go, yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this because I'm gonna get it to roll. It's the same thing. What you're trying to do is make the ball roll properly. That's your whole goal when you putt. That's it, simple, ga simple game. So when you're working with the quad here, you put that ball right in the middle of that and now you're looking at certain things and you're gonna see numbers pop up. There's gonna be a skid number. Is the skid number an important number? Why is skid important? Right, I don't know either. Here's what happens. Skid numbers are gonna change based on what? They're gonna change based on the length of the putt. I'm gonna have less skid before it gets into true. Basically skid is just telling you the amount of time from the strike to the point of true roll. That number is gonna change based on the length of the putt and also what? The length of the grass and also what? The slope of the thing, right? So if I'm going uphill on slow greens, I gotta hit this a little harder. 
So my putter head is going to have a greater speed to it and it's going to drive the ball with a greater speed. And so that greater speed is going to make it skid a little longer. What you're looking for is consistency, not a perfect number. There's not a perfect skid number. So when I get into here and I hit this putt, I lean that shaft, I let that putter come up into the air with a little bit of a rise angle. Now what I'm looking at is I got two Fs right there, which I got a lot of those in school, so this is brilliant for me. And also I had a five point something speed on the, on the uh, putter head. My impact point, if you can show the impact point, is going to be high on the putter face. So I'm high on the putter face again, and I got everything to do what I wanted to do. So here's my ball speed, 5.2, club head speed, 3.6. So now what I want is I want a consistency in this. So I want this thing to basically be right around 5 with my... with my putter head speed, and then I want that ball to be right around three and a half. Miss it! Go to your room! Go to your room! You son of a... Okay. I didn't pick that one up, actually. It didn't get it. You scared the machine, you sneaky... Charlie Reimer is one of the great personalities in this game, by the way. He's tremendous. And also a, a proud PGA professional. You ready for me? Okay, so that's a little shorter than the one that I hit before. So my putter head speed's probably gonna be a little bit slower. My, my ball speed's probably gonna be a little bit slower. So I was 5'2", I was 5'6", and 3' something. And this one is 5'2". So a little bit short, still got that, still got the same lean in that shaft. So there's 5-2 and 3-5. So I knew the ball came off a little, bit, a little bit slower. However, it was pretty consistent. My speed there was probably maybe five, six inches off. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna paste one here. So that one's obviously going a little bit too fast. So we're going to see the, the putter head speed go up. We're going to see the ball speed go up. So now my putter head speed is 6.8. My club head speed is 5. Still the same strike angle, still the same strike point. So I got all the things that I want, but because I missed the speed of the putter head, I increased the speed of the ball, which what happens if you increase the speed of the ball? What does it do to the hole? Makes it smaller. And once you make it smaller, you have to be more precise. Does everybody get this? Does anybody have any questions? Yes? Is there certain numbers you're looking for, though? Are there certain numbers that you're looking for? Like how many degrees up? So in the, in the rise angle or the line of action, you're looking for about two to four degrees. It's going to depend upon how high your impact point is. If you have a really high impact point, you have to have more up, and there's a point where you start getting too much up, and so you lose energy transfer. And that energy, in my opinion, over four is, is way too high. You can work with even, right? So if I, if I were to do what I was gonna do, say with the leaning of the shaft, but I moved the putter head through the ball, my efficiency number or smash factor is gonna go up. It's like a car crash. I mishit that. I choked. I don't, I don't putt like that. That's the problem. Because I listen to this guy on TV. He seems to know what he's talking about. <laughs> All right, let me try that again. So I'm going to take that, lean it, and kind of drive it through. OK, it worked. And there's a lot of people that putt efficiently that way, effectively that way. So do you see the efficiency number go up? It went up to 1.53? Okay, so in effect what happens is, is that when these two numbers are getting a little bit closer, when the efficiency number goes up, it's telling you that you're sending the putter a little bit more along the ground instead of up this way. I'm not a big fan of having, I, I, like, my, I like my efficiency number to be right around 1.4, 1.5, right in there. I don't want to see 1.7s. It's telling me there's too much downward strike. 
Two to three, yeah, two to three up in the in the rise angle is what I'm looking for. If you if you're at one five, I'm not sending you to the principal's office. You're gonna be fine. Okay? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Yep. We've been watching this and your lie angles and your toes up about four to five degrees. Correct. How does that affect the lungs, the face, everything, right? So first of all, I, this obviously isn't, isn't my putter, right? And what, it, what will happen is, believe it or not, when you start, you remember I say Ioki used to putt like this? So once you start taking the toe when you're doing this, in effect what's happening is, is that you're moving the impact point high, but you're also moving it outside. It's like hitting a hook, right? So I'm a big stickler with this point. I want that putter to be, I want toe down if anything. I don't want toe up when I'm putting. But this putter because of, it's just not the putter that I choose to use other than the fact that it's a Scotty camera. So there are compensations that you can make, but typically what you'll see is people that have a putter head that the toe is in the air, they're gonna to tend to open up that putter when it comes through because just like when you have a shot where the ball's above your feet, it's gonna to tend to deflect the ball to the, to the heel side of the club or to the pull side. And so you're gonna offset that and you're gonna guide that that way. And what it'll also do is it'll slow your putter head speed down. So that's pretty much how that, that gets changed. I like, I like, in a perfect world, I'd be up here high with the hands and kind of doing that number. See if I stuff the toe in the ground a little bit more. But that's also something that's gonna help you when you're fitting people for, for a putter, right? I think one of the biggest problems that we have is we don't fit people for putters. That's a big problem. So that one there is fairly level. Pretty high impact point. Nice shaft, so that was, that was one five. So I had negative 1.5 degrees. I'm looking for in an ideal space, and again, Part of it has to do with how much loft sits on the putter at the beginning. I put two degrees of loft on my putter. I know a ton of really good putters that have one degree of loft. They don't like to have a lot of forward shaft lean. I'm a big forward shaft lean guy. Um, but that's just, that's because of where I've studied my putting and the people that sort of I've read that were the best putters in the world. Bobby Locke is my guy, yeah. Um, are you paying attention to the path and face at all when you're giving a lesson? I pay attention to the face. Path to me is, path is responsible for, in putting, less than 10%. Putting is all to me, it's all about, the only part of the path that's important to me is this rise angle path. I'm not. Okay, so here's the question. So my face is 2.5 degrees closed. This is where we're getting, we're gonna get into putting 500 right here. Okay, so we're out of, so here's the deal. If I had a T on a ball, so imagine that there's a vertical line and a horizontal line. So what I do is I have these labeled out as, as different quadrants. So there's four quadrants, upper right, lower right, lower left, upper left. As a right-handed putter, if I hit the ball in the lower left, say one, I'll just make up a number, one degree open, lower left, that ball will go offline by more than one degree in the upper right. Okay. So I would rather have a closed putter face than an open putter face. Okay. And the reason why is that when you get a closed putter face, you get a high impact point. When you get a high impact point, you get the ball to tumble this way. And what happens is, is that the ground helps establish an axis of rotation because it didn't get up into the air. You're in effect, you're better off pounding that thing into the ground, having it go like this, jump up into the air with that forward spin and roll that way. That's a better way to putt than putting with loft and popping it up into the air. Depends on the length of the putt. So if I, have a, if I have a six foot putt, if I open up that putter face one degree, I'll miss it. If I shut the putter face one degree, I'll make it. Okay, so for me, it's, it's a length of putt thing. You get into here, 
Now you get a little bit more because you can be a little bit off and still, but you're better off, basically, simple rule, better off shut face than open faced when you're putting, okay? I, I teach people to understand why shutting the face is gonna be better than, close, than opening the face. And at that point, if, if they come through and they see a number where you know, they're, they're inconsistent between square and say a degree and a half closed, they know that that's good. Because everybody, I mean honestly, everybody stinks. So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to get people to putt with speed control. And speed control is gonna get flawed as I get open faced and hitting in that low left quadrant. Speed control is gonna improve when I get shut faced and I get my impact point sort of on the center line or to the upper right quadrant for a right-handed player, okay? Anybody else have any questions? Okay, so here's what I can tell you. First of all, thank you all for hanging around and listening. I would love to stay all day, but unfortunately I've gotta run. What I can tell you is, is that we've worked hard at, at this product. This is a phenomenal product and, it's, and it gives you absolute information and there's more stuff that we're doing every single time we're having conversations with people that know way more about this stuff than we know and they're adding things all the time to help you become a more consistent putter what i would tell you as a rule is this you're looking for consistent skid rates you're looking for consistent putter head speeds you're looking for consistent ball speeds and for me the whole thing is understanding consistency in what I'm getting with my strike point on that putter, my strike point on the ball, the speed that the ball's coming off at, the skid is gonna be important only in the consistency. Okay, everybody get it? All right, I hope everybody has a wonderful show. Thank you so much for spending time. Thank you.